The other day, I was joined by Sean O'Brien of the Calder Farmstead Podcast, an AHL podcast, to talk strictly about the Bridgeport Islanders and a couple other players. And a portion of our discussion fell specifically on Simon Holmstrom. So I wanted to put that there. Uh, I'll go over the rest of our discussion over on the Eyes on Isles podcast in, in the Down on the Farm segment that I usually do. But I really wanted to put this here on this channel about Simon Holmstrom because I thought it was important to give it to air it out a little bit more. So here's my discussion with Sean O'Brien about Simon Holmstrom of the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, now Islanders. Let's talk about a guy who Islanders fans are really kind of stuck on and, and for good reason, and that's Simon Holmstrom. What the heck is going on there? Uh, from what I saw, he wasn't much of a factor. From what I can tell on the stat sheet, it's also he's also not a factor. When I watched him, not a factor. Not a big factor for even Team Sweden at the World Juniors this year. You know, b- barely. He had a couple of games where he showed up, but like that was lower op- opposition teams. What's your take on the Isles 2019 first rounder? What is going on there? Yeah, uh, his season statistically also not very great. He ranked in the 15th percentile in my model, which is replacement level. So not too great. Um, Sorry, he's replace- also- is that replacement level AHLer? Yes. <laughs> Boy. So not great. Um, but there were good things to take away from his tape. Uh, I think between him and Durando, like he definitely had the more upside, the more things that I could point to and be like, okay, at least you have some NHL level skills. Like I think he's and has NHL level playmaking ability and passing execution. Now, is it elite and no, but like, is it a passable NHL grade for his playmaking passing? I think so. I, I'm, you know, the rest of the package, like his skating, I feel like has somehow gone backwards, which is not what you want from a, you know, 20 something year old first round draft pick. Like it used to be a strength of his. And I feel like his stride has just gotten choppier and choppier to the point where like he doesn't get a lot of power from it anymore. And watching him play, there were moments where I'm like, if he's a faster skater or a stronger skater, he makes this play here or he plays this puck differently. Whereas that's not how it went for him a little bit. There are also a lot of concerns for me is he's very much not a good four checker, not physical, not a battler along the boards. Um, he's someone who plays defense at a very much lip service level of like, I will do the minimum amount to not get you know yelled at by my coach, but like, I'm never going to be Mark Stone. Um, and that that's, that's not a, a, a terrible thing. A lot of guys aren't Mark Stone, right. but like I think of what the system he's going to and what Barry Trotz is going to want from him because Barry Trotz is not going to put him on, you know, a second or third line in a scoring role. Like he's going to be put in, you know, situations where he's expected to be a fourth line energy guy or maybe get some PK time. And like, that's just not his game. He is very much a, a you know, a playmaker that doesn't really drive play is not that great of a skater. And I feel like in some instances was not utilized the best by, by Bridgeport uh, on their power play breakouts. He would be uh, the guy taking the drop pass uh, with oh. speed to come through the neutral zone. It's like, but he's not a good skater. He doesn't have the speed for that. And that's not really a good role for him. He was on the half wall on his offside and would be getting set up for one timers. And I'm like, but he's not a very good shooter. Like I think he could run the power play from the half wall as more like how Marner does for the Leafs in that role. But like, he's not a, he's not a very good shooter. Like his mechanics are good, but he just doesn't generate power. And also kind of like Durando, like he's listed at six, one, one ninety four, but he's getting muscled off pucks really easily. And if he were, you know, five, 10, one seven, he'd be like, well, them's the breaks when you're that size. But like, He definitely has a professional hockey player frame, but like there's, there was not evidence to me of like being able to play through contact, which that's not great at the NHL level. And it's especially not great when you've seen how these playoffs have gone uh, in the Eastern conference where it's basically just prison rules. So (laughs) that's, that concerns me. But like I said, there are good things to his game, but there are also streaky elements to that. Like, there are games in which I'm like, wow, he looked really good there. Maybe he can start, you know, to build off of this and he'll put in two or three good games. Maybe he doesn't show up on the score sheet because again, he's not a driver of play. He's going to need other players at this point. And as we talked about, uh, Bridgeport was not built for that this year. Uh, They were not built for speed. They weren't built for talent. Um, But 
he would get like a couple of good games on tape of just individually, at least doing what he could to make the most of what he had. And then he would disappear for, you know, a week, two weeks and just be a ghost. So that's not great. One of the other aspects about his game that I wasn't a huge fan of is he will try and force one-on-ones a lot instead of, you know, using space, trying to like use more of his teammates better. Like he has some one-on-one moves and he'll pull, he'll try and pull them, which I at least somewhat give him credit for when you're, you know, going in on a dump and change instead of dumping in and trying to make something happen. I'm all, I'm fine with that, but it very much felt like a junior style of play that you see a lot of guys uh, get coached out of them if they want to move up. And he is still has a limited time, you know, as a professional hockey player in North America. So I'm not super concerned about that. And I started to see it fade a little bit, but definitely an aspect that next year, like he's going to need to make some big strides in that he's going to need to find whatever happened to his skating stride. And I think he's also going to need some better line mates, some better teammates, some better roster construction. He's going to need somebody on his line that he can, find in space in the offensive zone or that can carry the mail through the neutral zone because that's not a strength of his. I think if he's someone who's like the trailer on a rush, who can be someone who sets up on the power play or the half wall, he can have success and start to build that confidence and develop his game more. But Bridgeport doesn't look like they're terribly set up for that. And he definitely was not utilized in that role this year. Yeah, that's the thing that I, I get with him. From when I, I spoke to his world junior coach, his, his big thing is Simon needs a bit of consistency in his surrounding right and this year was not the year of consistency nor was the last year right and this year he went from playing in sweden playing in, in the world juniors and then playing a short year uh in bridgeport not really consistent but that second year under under brent thompson so you would think that playing in that same system having that same voice would help him grow but i'll, I'll pose this question to you uh do you feel like he's growing or is he stalling as a prospect He's still I, young, right? So like, but yeah, he's like, there's still a lot. And like I said, it's a, a 24 game sample size does not uh, a lot of confidence in me make. And I would say this was not a very good showing from him, but I wouldn't be, you know, getting out outrageous and throwing the baby out here with the bathwater. Like, was this an ideal season for him? And did he really look like he took big steps forward? No, no, he didn't. But at the same point, he's still very young. This was a very weird year, and it was not a lot of games. Like The other thing, too, that I, I've kind of thought about factoring in for a, a lot of these guys is, I mean, him and Durando are not North American natives. They're, I believe, Swedish and... Pretty sure Durando's... Oh, no, Durando's Canadian. Canadian. He's French-Canadian. So Durando aside, uh, Holmstrom is is Swedish, and it also makes me think, like, being in this isolating environment in, in Bridgeport, you know, away from your family, not even really able to see your teammates and stuff, and that kind of just really out on an island by yourself, that's got to suck and be a terrible environment to play in, period. So given all of that, a short, you know, a short, like, run trying to find your groove during a season where you're playing, like, every sixth day, Wednesday at noon in front of no fans, like – he has a lot of reasons to have the season look the way it did and still come back next year and, you know, show why he was supposed to be, why he was a first round pick and valued so highly by the Islanders. Like I wouldn't be slamming the panic button if I'm Islanders nation right now regarding him, hmm. but no, I don't know Islanders be, nation. <laughs> oh no. I, I, I'm saying like, I'm sure that that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's warranted yet. Okay. If he comes through next season playing, you know, 68 or 72 or whatever AHL games next year and still looks the same, then we can start smacking the panic button and finding, you know, a, a place for him to go. But I think there are some reasons to be optimistic and mostly a lot of reasons to not over, you know, galaxy brain this that, oh, he's, he's a bust now because he played 24 mm-hmm. kind of underwhelming ish games in a, dumb dumb year <laughs> no um okay so I, I that's all i've got sean for you where yep. can people find your work outside of like the calder uh, the calder yep. farm said podcast yep so uh besides the calder farms that podcast which we are now in off-season mode so we'll probably be doing instead of uh twice a week when we would do during the season we are now 
probably once every other week, unless breaking news happens. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Sean O'Brien 81. Uh, it's somewhat of a personal account. Most of my tweets are hockey based, but you'll see, you know, uh, takes on Zack Snyder's justice league movie, uh, or, uh, random musings throughout the day. But most are hockey based. Um, I'm on Instagram too, uh, where most of them are of my adorable dog or the crazy hockey socks I wear that are, you know, Simpsons sprinkled donuts. Nice. Uh, that's at Sean O'Brien underscore 81. My stats work uh, for the AHL. That uh, is where like you can find the model that I use to evaluate players um, as well as like things like team PDO um, projected standings, all of this really wild and fun stuff that I do. Uh, that you can find at bit.ly slash data dump and chase, all lowercase, all one word. Um, that will take you to my Tableau page and we'll show you all of the, the fun things you can see there uh, for all the stats work that I do. But that's pretty much where you can find me, uh, the Calder Farmstead podcast. If you search that on any podcatcher on YouTube, I'm sure you will find us. Beauty. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for taking the time to speak to me about this. And hopefully we're next time we talk about the Bridgeport, islanders we have better things to talk about or good things i should say i can't imagine we get too many worse things so uh that sounds good to me beauty man thank you very much all right take it easy take it easy now